through uh, a single owner without, in fact, the same individual uh, licensing that is there. And that is the kind of thing we see in terms of stud dogs, uh, in terms of uh, breeding dogs, uh, in terms of puppy farms. If you have a coverall license that you can apply at any point if an inspector calls, without actually ensuring a, a proper accountability. And again, as was mentioned by Senator Boyan, um, Boylan, there is, um, there's a lot of ancillary benefits by having that kind of actual proper documentation uh, through microchipping uh, in terms of the management or being aware of dangerous dog breeds and indeed what kinds of dog breeds are in an area. I think it's something very useful information, but also in a very positive sense. If we have that kind of genuine registration of dogs, we also can plan for them, you know, even in terms of the public spaces that we want dogs to be able to access with their owners, in terms of ensuring the development plans, the planning for our parks and so forth, also reflects spaces and plans for the existence and the um, prevalence of dogs in a particular area. In respect of, I think, the second very important piece, I was, like others, shocked, and I only learned through Senator Boylan, uh, of the fact that where animals uh, are seized, um, under the Health and Welfare Act 2013, that they are kept in this limbo uh, until legal proceedings uh, have concluded. And I do think there is no reason for this when I look to, I think, given that we set conditions in respect of animal control, which must be met for, you know, by, a, by a purported owner. Uh, and I think the provisions in Section uh, 4A a um, of the, the, the that has been inserted in section two of this bill, whereby that requirement of say proving ownership of the dog to the satisfaction of the authorised officer, um, you know, I think that that is a very reasonable requirement which meets the property requirements in terms of. I think there's absolutely no issue from my perspective in terms of uh, property rights being affected because there is a provision, but the onus is placed on a purport, uh, uh, an alleged or purported owner to prove their ownership. And I think that satisfies the property piece. And then we have to say, is there any other reason that you wouldn't allow these dogs to move towards uh, being able to get you know, new and loving homes? And, and it's very important that it's not simply because they're evidence. Because you know, when we have a raid on a puppy farm, the puppies are not evidence, they are victims. <laughs> and they are who the damage has been done to. So we certainly don't want that we continue that. And I think it is really important uh, that actually the rehabilitation and care for those who have been damaged by an action should be the priority. And in that sense, really ensuring that they have access to socialization, that they can access forever homes is really, really important. So Minister, I think that's a very sensible provision. I think the precedent is set in the Animal Control Act and the, those are the provisions mirrored here. So I think this really is a good proposal and it will make a huge difference uh, in terms of ensuring that uh, those who are mistreated do not continue to suffer in this regard. Uh, lastly, Minister, and I come to a slightly wider piece you know, I welcome that there is a review in terms of animal welfare. I hope that we do get a proper debate in terms of the Agriculture Committee's report in respect of those issues. I think we need to have that in this House. And I do want to just signal, you know, again, this House has a record in these issues because we brought amendments to the Greyhound Racing Industry Act uh, in 2019, specifically around welfare and around the obligation for the rehoming of greyhounds. And I have been concerned by reports over the last year that there seems to be a slippage within the Greyhound Racing um, uh, Authority in terms of the amount that they are contributing or allocating in terms of their resources to those issues of welfare, which seems to be rolling back, and also where we've had signals whereby they have been, um, there have been um, Greyhound Racing Ireland, for example, where there has been questions of not engaging in rehoming projects with organisations, welfare organisations, who have been critical of the greyhound racing industry. And I think that's very unfortunate because a lot, we need all organisations to be supported in terms of these welfare issues. And we need to ensure that we don't have a rollback in the delivery of the obligations under Section 29. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator. I call on Senator Maria Barm. Senator, you have six minutes. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Cahirlach and Minister. Thank you so much for coming to discuss this all important issue. And I suppose uh, dog welfare and animal welfare is something that we all have concerns over, you know. And 
very aware of it. Um, I think, you know, to follow up on some of the previous points in relation to maybe um, control of the Act, and certainly um, in some local authorities there isn't, you know, wardens are in a very skeleton staff, so I would have concerns about you know, is there full control, as in the wardens, do they follow up on, on licences, do they follow up to make sure that people are, you know, obeying by the law? <laughs> it's my understanding that, you know, you can't have your dog off the lead um, outside of your own property. And how many people actually enforce that law? That's one question that, you know, I'd like to, you to consider. In terms of um, so many local authorities, not every local authority has a dog warden. And in some of them, it is a skeleton staff. And, you know, when you've got a big local authority, it is very, very hard if you've only got one warden to actually follow up on every single complaint. So I'm sure some of them go amiss. And while I'd like to pay compliment to, um, to the people that go out there and carry out their job, and the many volunteers as well that uh, are with the different animal welfare groups, um, because I know in my own area in Nimerick that there are so many people involved in Nimerick animal welfare, but there's also uh, private groups that actually go out and collect dogs that are maybe abandoned, and other animals as well that are abandoned maybe um, you know around Christmas time and at different times of the year, and they go out and they bring them into their own homes, and then they actually go on to, to um, try and rehome them. I do think it's welcome that uh, we don't see as many dogs are, are um, being put down as we have in the past, or the reports are that they're not being put down, that they are being rehomed. Um, but I do think that this is welcome, that there isn't as many, you know, um, ending up be, being put down. Um, in terms of, um, I suppose, the control of the Dog Act, and in terms of what we saw with the young boy there in Wexford a few weeks ago, the sheep last week, that's all about control and I think that's two really, really serious issues that we need to look at. Also in terms of the microchip, um, my understanding is that currently the microchip is actually um, linked back wh where it happens, it doesn't always happen in every area, it's linked back to the breeder. But that realistically is not good because it should be linked to the licence and I think that's very clear in Centre Boylan's bill certainly because, you know, I mean, if it's linked to the licence then it's linked back to the actual owner of the dog because even um, you regularly see maybe on Facebook or in social media different animals that have been abandoned and yet an owner can't be traced because the dog isn't chipped or whatever. So I do think it should be made compulsory that every animal should be chipped, um, but chipped to the actual licence. Um, following up on, I suppose, um, where I highlighted the fact that wardens are on a skeleton staff, um, you know, that's how, uh, if, if people don't have a licence, who's going to follow up on it? So I think that's something, another area that needs to be looked at. But overall, I, I do welcome the fact that the thrust of the bill is very positive and that it's a step in the right direction in terms of how we deal with animals and animal welfare, because I don't think any of us want to see, you know, our, our animals being abandoned, especially any of us that, you know, have our own animals. And I think every household, you know, that. Uh, at some stage has maybe a dog or, or, or other animals that come through, but certainly in terms of, I'd like to compliment uh, Senator Boylan for bringing forward the different suggestions in this bill, and certainly to say that, um, you know, I'd like to see some of these being implemented in the future. Thank you. Gorham uh, Margaret, Senator Paul Gavin. Gorham Margaret, Senator Gavin, and I want to welcome the Minister. And indeed, I want to welcome the general debate that we're having here this evening because it's quite clear that on a cross-party basis there's widespread support uh, for Senator Boylan's <coughs> bill. I want to commend Senator Boylan, as others have, have, have already said, uh, she's really passionate but also very knowledgeable about issues in relation to animal welfare and she's produced a very practical bill this evening. The challenge for us, and it's a challenge we've met before, uh, is to unite around a common cause here uh, and I would appeal to you, Minister, when you're responding to give a commitment uh, that, that your government will facilitate this bill quickly through all stages of the Shannard, because it's a very simple bill. It's something we all agree on. There's no complicating factors here. Um, and, and, and as others have said, uh, like, like Senator Carrigy, like, like Senator Higgins, I didn't know that when animals are seized uh, in terms of welfare cases, that they face months and sometimes years 
in an animal shelter until the case is, is, is actually completed. I don't think the general public know that. And I think if they did know that, it would be entirely unacceptable. Um, look, I mean, I, I'm a passionate dog owner myself. Uh, my 15-year-old uh, Blossom uh, hopefully is tuning in this evening. Um, she's giving up the World Cup semi-final, and that's the level of commitment we need to see. Is it? OK. <laughs> Um, but but on, a, on a serious note, and, and I think that it's, it's important to, to, to recognise that there's, there's been a collective agreement on this point, we have a real problem with enforcement, Minister. Uh, we have a real problem with policing and enforcement. Um, and that awful incident with that poor child, uh, my heart goes out to him and his family. But we also have to be clear, what we need is enforcement and enforceability and we need resources. Otherwise, new laws aren't actually going to, to actually help in that, in that case. And um, thanks to Senator Boyle, and I looked at figures in relation to where I live in Limerick, uh, where we have just two and a half dog wardens for eight and a half thousand dogs. And, and, and the, 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 ten, the, the detail is really telling because basically no prosecutions in relation to uh, the Control of Dog Act uh, last year, none whatsoever. Uh, only nine fines, and only five of which were paid. Um, so it's, it's quite clear, and I looked at the figures across a whole range of counties, it's quite clear there's a problem here. Indeed, I think the figures are that uh, uh, 97 prosecutions in the whole state, 74 were from one county, uh, Cork County. Um, so so there's, there's a massive problem here, and I mean, I think collectively we need to ensure that this government addresses that issue of enforceability, uh, of accountability, um, and I do want to speak to, the, I suppose, the wider issue that's been, because it's interesting, when I, when I put out some, some publicity in relation to this topic, um, I've got a huge response from, from the general public, um, particularly in Limerick where I live, and it was pointed out to me there's not one animal welfare inspector in Limerick at the minute. So where there are cases of cruelty to animals, the only recourse is to the guards. Uh, and the reality is the guards are wonderful people, but oftentimes they just don't have the time and resources to respond to these issues. So there are simple, practical steps that we need to see taken at local authority level, but of course that needs to be funded, and it needs to be funded at the government level to make a real difference uh, in relation to these cases. Um, so, to summarise, the legislation we're discussing today, it will tidy up an anomaly in existing legislation which will assist animal welfare groups to improve the lives of dogs who are rescued under the Animal Welfare Act and to trace ownership it's a very worthy bill that should be pushed through the houses speedily and with cross-party support. Um, and it's, it's clear it does have cross-party support, Minister, uh, and everyone has, has spoken about the, the difference the bill will make in terms of being able to trace a dog licence to the actual dog and the type of dog, and, and the much better information that local authorities will have as a result of this. So I'm not going to labour the point um, beyond the points I've mentioned already, but I would appeal to you, Minister, when you're responding, this is an issue, like others, in fairness, where we, we should really get together <coughs> and ensure that we don't play politics with it, that we get this bill through the Shannon as quickly as possible, because I think the general public out there would like to see these, is these issues tackled quickly and clearly, and thanks to Senator Boylan, we have a bill to do just that. So I commend the bill, I commend Senator Boylan, and I commend all of the people who have spoken so passionately here this evening. Guru Magad. Guru Magad, Senator Tim Lambert. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologise. I was late for the debate. I was actually at the Agricultural Committee, and it's unfortunate that both were, both were at the same time, and I think that's unfortunate. And I think I want to compliment the members of the, of the Shannon that are actually on that committee. They do amazing work. And we all bring our own little you know, bit of knowledge. But I think we have a centre here who brings exceptional knowledge when it comes to, um, in particular, the issue here today. Uh, we have hearings, and in fairness, Senator, you have exceptional knowledge. I chaired some of them. It was a learning curve for me, absolutely. A bit of a country bunking without a shadow of a doubt. Didn't realise half the stuff that was happening out there was happening. But um, those hearings were quite graphic in many ways, give an example of what they're doing to the dogs. Terrible stuff altogether. And I think we just need to probably tighten up legislation, and it, I think this is a really important piece of legislation, because when I read it, it addresses some of the issues, some of the issues that came up through, during those hearings. And I think it's just we need to, if we could, move this legislation forward in a timely manner, and I think that's what is required here, so we can actually make sure that the regulations that are in place are actually workable. Um, as you've heard from other speakers, like the, the regulations at the moment are absolutely bizarre. Like, I don't know how departments could allow this kind of interaction to happen, 
because like they are literally not workable at the moment. And I think this piece of legislation goes a long way to actually sort out some of those core issues. But like we have a probably a cultural issue in some regards too, and I think it's about legislating definitely, it's about informing, it's about educating. And look, we saw what happened yesterday, the day before, with the sheep kill, you know. And that was another significant issue as well. And like, I was talking to Senator Kyle about this during the week, or yesterday, and he rightly said the ads that we had in the 80s about sheep kills need to come back. And I think, you know, it's about educating people too about what they need to do to control their dog. And that's a body of work as well. That's probably not in this legislation, but has to be a part of the team of change. I think that's it. It's about a team of change. And in fairness, it needs to change. Society wants it to change. As other speakers rightly said, this is a huge issue. Like every household, not every household, but the majority of households have a pet of some nature. Do you know what? They're all connected to this. The majority, 99.9% .9 of them, take care of their pets in a really appropriate manner. Unfortunately, we have the minority, and because of that, we need to have the legislation in place to make sure that those dogs are, are properly treated, and, to, and not just dogs, pets. And I think it's just an important issue that this needs to be addressed. And from my point of view, I was just disappointed I actually missed the start of it, but I think it's, you know, to lend my support to it. I will do what I can to make sure this goes through the, the house as soon as we can, because we all have our own skill set. This probably isn't my skill set, but I've learned a lot in the last eight or nine months regarding this issue. And it's important now that we actually try and get this piece of legislation through so we get meaningful change on what really is an important issue. Thank you, Chair. Thank <laughs> Um, Minister, I want to say a couple of things, and, and I won't prolong uh, the debate because it, it's great to hear uh, the, the unanimity uh, that, that's across the House in support uh, of Senator Boylan's uh, bill. But like other colleagues, I do want to recognise, uh, as the Sinn Féin Group leader, just the dedication and the passion and the commitment uh, that Lynn has uh, to the issue uh, of animal welfare and ensuring uh, that we as a group used our private members' time to initiate uh, this bill uh, and get, get the ball rolling on what is an important uh, issue. And as other colleagues have acknowledged right across uh, the chamber tonight, there are practical, uh, sensible proposals in this bill that will have real tangible benefits and outcomes. And that's what matters here. Because a lot of the time we talk about um, legislation and it's kind of, uh, what's the English for chevy? Sean, uh, kind of abstract, sort of, uh, it's, it's, it's out on the ether. Uh, we can see the practicals uh, in this legislation. And one of the great strengths for me, uh, and Senator McGrehan will uh, appreciate this point, uh, no doubt, is that in doing this uh, piece of legislation and taking these measures, we can harmonise our approach to this issue north and south. So uh, my pet, Cogger Spaniel Toon, who's seven this month, I have him seven years uh, uh, this month, um, he thanks uh, Senator Boylan uh, as well for bringing it. So what we had to do uh, when we uh, got Toon uh, seven years ago was ensure, because in the north, dog licences and, and, mi and microchips are already connected, they're linked. Um, all dogs kept in the north must be microchipped before they can be licensed. You must provide a microchip number on the application form for a dog license. A dog license will not be accepted without a microchip number. The number must be registered at the dog owner's current address. Dog owners must hold a val valid license for their dogs, and the dog must wear an identity tag with the owner's name, address, and contact number. So we know that, that it can be done. We know that. Um, a bit up the road, they're doing it, um, and it would, particularly given the nature of the border and communities, whether you know it's families or a, a plot of land or a farm or whatever it may be, uh, straddle the border, uh, and it would make sense to do it here too. The primary uh, focus uh, of this legislation is of. Of course, obviously, on the issue uh, of dog welfare. Uh, uh, but as uh, has been said already, um, not only can this legislation be extended to apply to other animals, um, but it can lead to greater protections and accountability uh, for harm caused to other animals, such as cattle uh, and livestock, as was referenced uh, earlier. 
So, Minister, in bringing my remarks uh, to a conclusion, I just want to indicate that, that and reinforce the message. You've heard it repeatedly, um, but I'm going to say it certainly uh, as the last of our speakers before Lynn ultimately wraps up. We aren't precious about this being our bill. Um, we just want to see it get done. Uh, we want to see it become law, because the reality is that every day, every single day that this legislation isn't progressed through these houses, isn't ultimately passed, and then isn't effectively implemented, then it adds to the weight for dogs who are waiting for a loving family and a forever home. So while we wait, they wait even longer. So the sooner we get this done, the sooner those of us all who uh, are dog lovers, and there are many across uh, the chamber, the sooner we get this done, then the sooner dogs can start to be uh, rehomed uh, and sent uh, to their forever homes. So that's why um, I think this makes sense. And ultimately, that's the outcome, I think, as broad and as positive as this legislation is. For me, I think that's, that's the real crux uh, of it. So um, I, I appreciate and recognise the support of colleagues across uh, the chamber uh, tonight. Um, I hope we can take that same uh, approach to get this uh, through this house and indeed the other house uh, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Gorham Wagat. Gorham Wagat, Senator Sean Coyne. Gorham Wagat, Kanye Luck, and welcome, Minister <coughs> Hackett. And uh, thank and compliment Senator uh, Boyle for um, initiating uh, this bill, and indeed compliment the members of the Joint Directors Committee for their work on the publication of the report, uh, of which there are numerous. Uh, recommendations and observations which um, hopefully can be progressed um, over, over, the, over the coming period and the Minister is reviewing uh, the guidelines at the moment. Uh, I previously, in my previous uh, life, served uh, as Minister of State of the Department of Community Rural Development and we um, are enacted at the time the revised guidelines in relation to dog breeding establishments which came into effect on the 1st of January 2019, which were a vast improvement on what was there previously. Um, obviously, not everybody will be satisfied that they went far enough, but there was certainly a huge improvement in relation to socialisation uh, of, 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 of pups and focusing on improving the welfare of, of dogs and pups. Uh, they provided greater clarity, as said, on socialisation, greater emphasis on the need of accurate record keeping, um, direction in relation to staff animal ratios, and a provision for unannounced inspections of dog breeding establishment by the local authority of veterinary uh, service. Of course, those are the establishments that are regulated, that are, are recorded. Are they all recorded? Are they all regulated? I mean, we can see they're not. And, and those are the difficult ones. Those are the, the, the individuals who don't comply with the law um, and um, keep breeding animals uh, and, and, and sell uh, thereafter. So I, 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 I do, uh, and as someone who uh, had a rescue dog for a number of years um, uh, till she passed away, um, you know, I, I, I do know the importance of socialization and the difficult backgrounds that many breeding dogs come from um, and how it takes them a, a period of time to to recover from their ordeal uh, and to, to to get used to being loved and to be held and to be cuddled and everything else uh, that you do with, uh, with, 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 with little dogs. Um, I, I have to say, confess, I wasn't aware that the, the and I suppose there are legal issues here in relation to the ownership of the pets, and uh, I know from some of the, the, the value of some of these dogs um, are, are quite astronomical, so that probably accounts for the difficulties in, in, in rehoming them, but that's no excuse, because they are uh, particularly, particularly puppies um, who, who at that age need the, the socialisation, need uh, the, the, to, be, to, be, to be with people, uh, and to be with people often in, in terms of ensuring uh, that they have um, a decent life, but also that they can, um, you know, be what they're supposed to be, uh, and not and not um, um, go go wild or or, or, or whatever. So I, I, I certainly think the provisions of the bill are, are very welcome. Um, I was contacted, uh, I suppose, on foot of the tragic case in Wexford by um, a lady on behalf of her mother who um, was killed in 2017 by three. Uh, three dogs, and I, I, I might be pronouncing this correct by Praise the Canario uh, dogs. And I, I won't get into the, um, the, the description of what happened uh, that lady, but the inquest was held in 2019, and the coroner made recommendations that these dogs uh, and uh, big muscular type dogs should be kept in a closure at all times that when in public be muzzled and on a chain. Uh, that anyone wants to keep them should undergo special training and hold a special licence 
and that the it's also recommended that the uh, that breed be put on the restricted list as I understand as of of, of this month um, that there is now that the Praise a canary or dog is now under consideration uh, to be put on the restricted list. Uh, but they're still available. They're still, if you Google them, they're there. And uh, I just looked at one description uh, on one of the websites of this breed. Known for their strong guarding instinct, Praise the Canarios are considered to be owner-focused breed that, that are highly intelligent and trainable. With ample socialization and proper training, uh, the Praise the Canario can become a loyal family pet and model canine citizens. And possibly they can if they are trained and at a young age. But if they're not, if they're not looked after, then they have killed uh, at least one person that we know of, and I'm sure there are others uh, in this country. Um, so how do, you, how do you combat that? How do you combat that when, when, when the, they're so valuable, the pups are so valuable, they're, they're, they're for sale uh, easily on websites uh, at, at astronomical costs, and uh, you, you have individuals that aren't always uh, law-abiding or, or, or care about, about uh, the law. And, um, you know, um, if not loved and not um, socialised, they end up killing people. And that's the, that's the crux of the matter. You know, I, I, I think um, Probably similar to, to human beings. If you get into the wrong company, um, you can you can do things. Uh, and perhaps dogs, no matter how good they are, if they're in the wrong company, uh, don't know what they're doing, or herd instinct, or whatever, and they can do damage. And we saw the atrocious um, images from Monegal and the 50, uh, 50 um, haggots or lambs that were killed. And unfortunately, that's a, an annual occurrence. There'll be a case. There'll be a case next year again somewhere in the country, or, or, or multiple cases, maybe at a smaller level, maybe maybe not not as many as that. So look, I, I think there's a lot of work needed on this, and I do like to compliment everyone who have been involved, uh, and hope that this bill can be progressed and further uh, work done in, in, in relation to legislation in this area. Thank you, um, Cahir Luck. And uh, firstly, I want to uh, thank um, Senator Boylan for bringing forward this um, um, piece of, of legislation. And I, I suppose just to say at the start that uh, Minister McConnell had indeed intended to take this. It was my offer to replace him because this bell has been ringing non-stop in the dole and um, in order to, I suppose, to facilitate the smooth passage of the debate this evening and, and indeed look after the welfare of my fellow senators. So uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, that is why he is not here himself. Um, certainly, I think at the outset it is worth um, acknowledging um, I think that this chamber has been a, a wonderful chamber and this is not the first time and, and many times we've discussed issues in relation to animal welfare. Certainly that was highlighted um, by uh, Senator Hoey and, and Higgins in their, in their um, inputs and I think it's just, it is welcome that we, we do discuss these issues and also to acknowledge, um, certainly as uh, Senator Kine did, the, the, the work that the committee has on ag has done in, in this area and certainly the, the input from the senators on that committee, so thank you for that. Um, I suppose firstly I would like to acknowledge the value dogs bring to the homes and families across Ireland, to, to families. They are fantastic, um, loyal companions, uh, valuable friends to many people around the country and indeed was, was heartened by um, Senator Boylan's own story, her rescue story. Um, and indeed I have two rescue pets at home, maybe watching the match as well, uh, Penny the Whippet and Millie the, the Lurcher, I mean, who certainly bring great joy and, and love to our family. So I can absolutely concur with the, 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 the wonderful value do, um, dogs, particularly rescue dogs, can bring to people's lives. Um, I think certainly it's clear that we do need to do more work in terms of strengthening um, the you know, enforcement of the legislation that we already have, and I think that has been raised, certainly um, Senator McGreen has raised that and, uh, and others. Um, and indeed, when what happened in Wexford and in Moneygall um, is absolutely horrifying, and we have to take every step to ensure that the existing policy and the legislation is being implemented and enforced. Um, and I, th I think that is that has been highlighted by a number of senators. And indeed, that's why the Taoiseach has asked my colleague, um, Minister McConnell, to take a leading role in this area and to examine what shortfalls there are regarding issues around the control of dogs, around dog welfare, licensing, breeding, microchipping and policing, um, both nationally and at the local authority level. And certainly maybe if we can learn 
from our, our, our colleagues in Northern Ireland, as, as Senator O'Donnell highlighted, I mean, that's something we, we, we do need to, to extend out and, and engage with. Um, certainly, um, I suppose it is important, um, and, and actually Senator Victor Boyan articulated it well, um, this, you know, there's a cross-government nature of this challenge because the, the welfare of, of our dogs and, and other animals lies in, in three different departments. So I suppose first and foremost, my department is fully committed to promoting responsible pet ownership. And um, Minister McConnell has begun that review process. He has tasked senior officials in, in, in my department to scope out where the responsibility around dog microchipping, dog welfare, and pet sales can link in with each, sorry, link in with a broader framework for a wider interdepartmental effort to improve coordination and effectiveness in this area. Minister McConnell and Minister Humphreys have also been in contact in this regard. Uh, Minister Humphreys, as, as Senator Boy, uh, Boyan highlighted, is uh, holds responsibility for the Control of Dogs Act 1986 and the Dog Breeding Establishments Act 2010, while Minister Dar O'Brien's department has responsibility for local authorities, and they have a role to play here. So again, I suppose that this cross-government challenge is highlighted further. In early 2022, both the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine and the Department of Community and Rural Development launched an awareness campaign highlighting the responsibility of dog owners in relation to dog control and, and sheep worrying. Um, last year, the department launched Ireland's first national animal welfare strategy, 2021 to 2025, which was titled Working Together for Animal Welfare. And this strategy sets out broad principles as to how we will improve animal welfare in Ireland over the coming years. And it will be relevant to the review that Minister McConnell will lead in the coming weeks. <clears throat> Pardon me. One of the commitments in my department's animal welfare strategy is to establish an advisory council on companion animal welfare. And that council is now up and running with independent members with a range of expertise and experience having been appointed. The council has met on several occasions this year and it will advise on policy matters and, where appropriate, issue guidelines and recommendations in relation to companion animals, including on some of the issues under discussion here this evening. The council is actually scheduled to meet again tomorrow and Minister McConnell and I look forward to receiving uh, the group's recommendations. My department has primary responsibility for the Microchipping, microchipping of Dogs Act 2015 and uh, data received on compliance is encouraging. According to the latest figures available, one, sorry, 124,408 dog microchips were registered during 2020. This represents a 24% increase on the total number of dog microchip registrations in 2019. In relation to the safe sale and supply of dogs, my department has introduced SI 681 of 2019, which requires anyone selling or supplying pets to keep records, including a record of from whom the pet was obtained and to whom the pet was sold or supplied. These regulations also prohibit the advertisement of a dog for sale or supply without providing minimum information about the seller, origin and age of the dog, and its microchip number. This applies to all forms of advertising. Unfortunately, the reality is um, that not all dog owners act responsibly. Um, and it certainly does happen, unfortunately, that some dogs are often kept in conditions without adequate space or exercise or, or socialization, as has been highlighted tonight. And this can lead to problems with temperament. This, the knock-on effect of this is that um, this creates a welfare problem, I suppose, not only for the dogs concerned, but possibly a risk then to other, other animals and other people perhaps um, if the poor treatment and management of these dogs um, leads to aggression. Um, I think um, in relation to, I suppose my, my colleague uh, Senator, Senator Vincent Martin did highlight, I mean my own party, the Green Party's long record in supporting stronger animal welfare legislation. But again, I think what was clear from tonight is we do have, we do have some good strong legislation. We have good laws, um, but again, it's about the enforcement of those laws, and I think that's really something we do need to focus on in, you know, in, in, the, in the months and years ahead. For this reason, one of the priorities for my department in working with the Advisory Council on Companion Welfare is to develop and promote a responsible pet ownership campaign. 
Responsible pet ownership is about educating people on what they need to consider before deciding whether to get a dog or indeed a cat uh, or any pet, any animal, how to keep and manage a dog uh, for, the, for the topic tonight, uh, how to manage a dog appropriately, um, breeding healthy dogs with the right characteristics and healthy conformations, and the responsibilities of dog owners towards others, particularly in relation to issues such as aggression and indeed sheep worrying. The bill before the House today has several recommendations that are, are of merit, and many aspects are already being examined by my officials internally. Department officials have also been engaging with stakeholders and dog welfare char charities on many of these issues, including those relating to the welfare of dogs. In, January, in early January, Minister McConnell will meet, early January 2023, that is, Minister McConnell will meet with uh, Minister Humphreys along with officials from both departments, where both ministers and sets of officials will bring their internal findings together to progress this matter with the urgency that it needs and deserves. The cooperation of the authorised officers from the ISPCA and DSPCA with On Guard the Siakona and the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine is recognised and deeply appreciated. I have full confidence that this cross-governmental approach will lead to definitive action to improve the situation without delay. So again, I suppose I would like to I suppose, reassure Senator Warfield that we have in fact doubled the funding to animal welfare organisations as per our programme for government commitment, um, and, and that, that's welcome. That, 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 um, that was that last week that was finalised, so I, I think that is most welcome. I, again, it's only one <coughs> element in, in dealing with this. Um, and in, in improving the welfare of animals across our country. Um, but it, it is welcome all the same. So, look, I'd just like to thank again the senators, thank, thank uh, Senator Boylan for bringing forward this legislation, and, and again thank the, the Chamber and the senators for their, their continued interest and engagement on this topic. Thank you. Um, Dormagat, uh, uh, and I, I won't delay people any longer because I think it's one of those nice moments when we are in agreement uh, and I thank the, the Minister for her comments and I'm heartened to hear of the work that is going on and that the elements of this bill are under consideration by the, the relevant departments. I would caution about uh, the, the information on microchip compliance because while we know the law states you have to have a dog microchipped, the problem is a lot of people aren't aware of the need to update that information and whether we've heard from Senator Byrne about it staying with the breeders, it's a breeder's obligation to re-register that in, in the owner, um, but also that members of the public aren't aware that they need to update as if their animal dies. And, and again, another simple example is in Australia, you get a yearly text message from the database that your, your microchip is registered with just to say, you know, is there any information that you need to update regarding the, the information around your dog? So there are simple ideas out there that we can uh, adopt, and as Senator O'Donnell has said, um, we only have to look up the road to show the, how effective it can be linking the microchip to, to the licence. But I, I won't uh, labour the points anymore other than to you know, commend this, this report and ask people who haven't already read it to, to read it. I'd like to thank everybody for, for their comments tonight and, and for their, their generous comments in, in relation to, to my own work. But I would like to extend a special thanks to the members of the Agricultural Committee because uh, I am a dub. And <laughs> you might be a country bumpkin. I am a dub, and I'm the only woman on the Agricultural Committee. And the agriculture and fishing uh, are huge areas of policy, and there's a lot of work that gets done on that committee. And in fairness, when I came in and sort of said uh, that we also had a responsibility around animal health and welfare and canine, all of the, the members of that committee uh, facilitated the hearings and extensive uh, work that was done and we worked together, uh, everybody participated in those hearings and, and I think cooperatively then we did produce that robust report and I think it again shows how important it is that on certain issues you can put politics aside when we all have a single purpose and we can actually produce really, really good work. Um, so I take great heart from the debate tonight. Uh, as I said, we just want to see uh, this enacted uh, and while I know you're saying it's under review, my fear is just because there are so many areas that need tightening up that that could delay this piece of, of legislation further and this is something that makes the change overnight um, and it's not complicated and it's not controversial. So I, again, I would encourage you to maybe expedite this piece of legislation while that review work is ongoing. The question is that the bill be now read a second time. Is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. When is it proposed to take committee stage? Next Tuesday.
Karen Mahogat. Uh, does, is that agreed? The sitting stands adjourned until 9.30am tomorrow in accordance with the orders of the House today. Karen Mahogat.